I thought if I could help teach people, because as an attorney, people believe that there's this additional credibility of, hey, you must argue a lot. You deal with a lot of conflict, which is all very true. And I'm giving a different message of instead of this, you have to win an argument. So why don't I teach them how to argue to understand and see that conflict is really a window into other people's struggles. It's time to get inside your own head. Begin with the psychology behind your behaviors. Infuse it with an acute understanding of self-awareness, emotion, storytelling, body language, and more. Then look at it all through the lens of the latest neuroscience research, broken down to its most digestible form. And you've arrived. Enhanced messaging, deeper connection, heightened influence, and a greater impact on the world. Welcome to the Amplify Podcast with Renee Rodriguez. Welcome everybody to the Amplify Podcast. This is Renee Rodriguez. And as you guys know, I don't do many podcasts that are with guests. And today I actually have somebody that I found on the internet. He's only 217 posts in, by the way. And I want to kind of preface that. But when I saw this, I saw immediately pure genius in the simplicity yet massive value that was being added. We have Jefferson Fisher. He's a trial attorney that teaches people how to communicate. And uh, I mean, it's like, it, I, now you're ringing him ahead. Hi, my name is Jefferson Fisher. I teach people how to communicate. <laughs> and it's so good. But in 217 posts, over 2.2 million followers, and literally every single one of his posts, I say goes viral. And when I say viral, it's 500,000 to millions, every one of them. And when you see something like this, and I feel like I'm catching him early on here because I know in the in the coming months, and especially by next year, he's going to be one of the biggest names out there. And he's already there. But what I reason why I wanted him on my podcast today is here when I find genius in communication where it's not platitudish advice, it's not something that is uh Gosh, it, you can tell that this is something that has been thought out, but it is so applicable and comes from true experience. And every things that he, all the things that he says, you can go out and do a minute later. This isn't something that takes study. He's broken it down to a process that is so easy. I was like, I got to have this guy on. And so a little bit of a background. First, Jefferson, welcome, by the way. Let's Thanks, see. Renee. Hey, man, what a kind and just humbling intro. I, I appreciate that, man. I'm, I'm glad to be in your presence today. Well, I'm only getting started, brother. We got, I got a lot more to say about you. <laughs> awesome. And, uh, you know, it's funny, the, the, the journey that I've been on it, on Instagram and, and social media, I, I, I fought it for many years. But I, when I saw you and I was watching this, I'm like, this guy carries a different energy about him. I mean, he's so likable. And he's doing it in his car. He keeps it so simple. And I just sent him a message saying, hey, just I love what you're doing. And getting a response right away and just building a, a conversation. And I think, you know, we're starting to build a relationship, which I'm thoroughly enjoying. But I also, I'm, I'm, I also know, my, my friend, you are going to blow up. And I know it's not what you want to hear because you're going to find out about Jefferson. He's extremely humble. And so much to the point, he doesn't like <laughs> saying these things, which is okay, which is why I'm here. I'll say I'm for you. Mm -hmm. But He's going to, and when I say blow up, let me, let me, let me put some value behind that word. He's going to create massive impact on a lot of people. And that is some of the stuff that I want to get to, because there comes a huge responsibility when you're making impact. People are going to start trusting you. They're going to start listening. And I, I'm just excited that that gift has been given to somebody that their heart is in the right place. And so let me just stop there because I'm going to say more about this, but I want to go back in, in Jefferson, you're 217 posts in, you're over 2.2 million followers that have generated that quickly. Let's go back. I want to dissect what was your initial thought in doing it? I want to go into what formula you use, because I know that in the beginning, you didn't really have one. Now you kind of have one mm -hmm. to the simple transitions, why you keep it this way? Where did you learn this stuff? Let's just start at the beginning and go wherever you want. Let's start anywhere, go everywhere. So tell us, how did you get started? Yeah, Renee, thanks so much. Thank you, really. I got started a little over a year and a half ago. So I made my very first Instagram video in January of 2022. And it's still there. It's still up. I mean, I'm about five flicks of your thumb and you're at the, you know, you're at the very start of this thing. And I just decided 
that I was going to put myself out there. I just started my own law firm. It was just me by myself at coffee shops. And I thought, hey, I'm a youngish guy. I ought to start doing some social media. And I did. So I, I made my first video that just told people, hey, I'm starting my own firm. I'm going to try social media. This is what I'm going to do. And that was that was the end of the video. But doing that it was just kind of dipping my toe in the water of, okay, all right, let's let's get to do this. And so I started making videos that just was me trying to figure out how the app worked. Because as you remember, Instagram used to be that you just took a picture of something that was pretty and put like a X pro right. filter on it. And, you know, we still remember the names of the filters. They're also the X pro, <laughs> but that was, yeah, you know what I mean? So, so this video thing was very, very new. And I just started playing around with it to see how the app worked. And I just kept thinking, man, I got to get like these TikTok guys, these attorneys that are doing like these really fast, quick style videos. And so I paid a friend of mine to shoot a video like that. It's still up there of, you know, three things to do after a car accident. And I paid money for this thing. And I was like, it needs to be TikTok style. And we did it. And it got less views than the one I had just like thumbed around with in my backyard. <laughs> and I was so mad because I just thought to myself, what am I doing? Like, this isn't me. This isn't anything like me. Why would I just sell myself? That's not giving them any reason to care about me or me to show that I care about them. And I just kind of had this epiphany of why don't I talk about things that I like to talk about. And like you, Renee, I love talking about communication. I always have. Not only do I like talking about it, it's just been a natural gift for me from day one that it comes very natural to me. That's why I'm able to talk about it. That's why you're able to talk about it. And I thought if I could help teach people, because as an attorney, people believe that there's this additional credibility of, hey, you must argue a lot. You deal with a lot of conflict, which is all very true. And I'm giving a different message of instead of this, you have to win an argument. I'm coming at it from the angle of that's that's just not true. The billboards with the 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 boxing gloves and we're gonna punch you out. Like that's that doesn't exist. It's a it's a yeah. fake, it's a it's a, an illusion. So why don't I teach them how to argue to understand and see that conflict is really a window into other people's struggles? And how mm -hmm. do I how do I create that? How do I get into everyday <laughs> conversations in their house, in their homes, between families? And so it kind of elevated into this idea of forget about telling them what I do. I don't tell people what kind of law I practice. I don't tell people how to contact me. I just try and help them. And because mm. of that, they they find me. But that was never the goal. And you know, I mean, it's just never two, the goal. Two things that you said there. One, I mean, three things, actually. One, you, you had the courage to go out there and do it. And you just said, you know what? I, I'm going to spend the money on this these highly produced uh, videos and nobody wanted it. Right. And you went back to something approachable and real. And it worked. Same thing that happened to me. I, I used to, I spent $25,000 on a video once and I got like 48 likes. <laughs> yeah. And that video was so good, but no, it wasn't. What I'm telling wanted. you, so I used to have zero views on my TikTok. Like I'm talking like eight videos had zero views. I'm talking ain't nobody. They, I, 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 hey, Renee, I Googled, okay. Physically like Googled. Why do I have zero views on TikTok? Love that. Uh, because <laughs> I did. I did. I was like, why am I getting like one to like zero views on anything? And I, I just thought to myself, I, I'm terrible. I need to just stop <laughs> until I started just forgetting it and saying, I don't need the camera. I, I don't need a fancy lighting. I don't need a studio. Just, I kind of got fed up with it. I'm just saying, I'm going to do it in my car. I'm just going to do it in my that. car where, where it made space, where it made sense <laughs> for me. I can't do it at the house. I have two little kids. I couldn't do it. You know, I didn't have an office at the time. Now I have several offices. Back then I had no, no office so cool. and it just only made sense to do it in my car. So you just do it where you are. And I love that you, you said, I'm not going to sell. I'm not going to tell them what I do or how to find me. I'm just going to give, I'm just going to help. Yeah. And I think so many of us forget that we're, it's not meant to pitch and we're not, we're not trying to go out and, and scroll through commercials so we can watch more commercials. We're trying to scroll through to find something that adds value to our life. And 
the fact that you stumbled on that so quickly. And what's amazing too, is that it's because it's who you are and you know, you, you're like, okay, I'm going to, I get I'm gonna permission to actually just be myself and just help. And then what's interesting too, is here in this, if you're listening to this, you're going, okay, one, have the courage to do it and get the feedback. He's Googling how to get better. So he's, he's finding the help, but then he's saying, how can I go back to what truly gives and then having something really good to say, which is and something different that winning doesn't mean winning. Winning means understanding. Mm -hmm. And he's he's going and really going the opposite direction of how an attorney would be seen. And guys, remember this. He's he's doing this in a profession that's the punchline of many jokes. <laughs> yeah. And he's building yeah. trust. An mm -hmm. attorney you trust? What? I mean, it's huge. And so I, I just wanted to point that out that I think that's that's so cool. You did away with the heavy equipment, which I'm obviously clearly I'm in a massive studio here, you know, massive. It's in my house, but we got four different studios in here. I've got you know, it's close to a hundred thousand dollars invested to make this thing right. And you sit in your car and you twist your wrist. I got this so, thing. That's all yeah. I got. <laughs> just that <laughs> thing. Right? My phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holding up my iPhone. Yeah. And, and so tell us, tell us about like like your journey into finding your style, because you you clearly now have a cadence, you have a style. Tell, tell us about like how you discovered even something as simple as the transition of twisting your wrist. Yeah, I was looking at what other people were doing at the time and trying to figure out what makes a good video. Because I, I thought I have good things that I can share with people. How do I it doesn't really matter how good your content is sometimes if you don't have a good setup to deliver it to them mm. and like what's going to be the best vessel for me to do this and i just started looking at what other people were doing and decided to do my own thing based off that so when i started a video i thought i need to let them know right off the bat what it is so my first video is how to argue like a lawyer part one i mm. didn't know there was going to be a part two but i just i said part one and rattled off three things that was it. And I tried Googling how to, at the time, TikTok was really popular on these people who could do like crazy cool transitions. And now they have all kinds of different apps to, to help with that. But for me, it was just, let me use my wrist and just snap it up, talk to it, snap it back down and point in a different direction in the car and snap it up and snap it down. That was really it. I have these people who <laughs> will message me and say, well, what tripod are you using? I'll say it is, it's called my right hand. Uh, it just, <laughs> there's no, there's no, <laughs> there's no mechanics. And there are others say, what's your lighting? There's, it's called the sun. Like I, sun. That's, that's really, <laughs> yeah, that's really, that's really all it is. And so the sun it, it, yeah. And they'll say, oh, like, what do you, what do you use for your transitions? I was like, I just do this. That, that's you just, as if you're just snapping your wrist playing the Nintendo Wii. I don't know if they still make that, but th that was just the idea. And the first one that I did, that was the first time I, I had really gotten serious of, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to help people? What am I going to give to them? That was how to argue like a lawyer. I talked about don't get defensive, blah, blah, blah. And that did well. And I thought, okay, I can stop making videos now because I just got like a thousand views on this video. This is amazing. And I asked a friend who had a hundred thousand followers on TikTok, which I just thought was unreachable at every level. Mind you, at this time, I had like 600 followers on my Instagram that were all just buddies, friends from law school. And I asked her, I said, what do I do? She said, make another one. I said, okay. I made four of them on the fourth. It went, that's the one that immediately went to like 6 million views. Mm. And overnight I had 200,000 followers. And she was like, don't ask, my friend was like, don't ask me for anything else. But yeah, so I just transferred the same videos on Instagram, on, on TikTok, and then to Facebook. I started Facebook really at the beginning of this year. And then now at like 1.5, it, it's just, it's just weird, Renee. It's just weird making them in my car. They don't realize that. I, I make them wherever I am. I'll just stop in a parking lot. If it's just a thought occurs to me, I've made them in front of a waffle house. I've made them in front of a dollar general. Like, you know, I mean, there's no, it doesn't, it doesn't matter just wherever you're at, but people can sense it. People can sense if it's polished or if it's really organic. Yeah. Well, I love that it's, you're, you're coming from this, this place and it, it, the same thing happened for in mind 
because I finally said, okay, I'm going to figure out how to do this. I, I had a friend of mine who introduced me to somebody that said, I want to do your content. And I was like, friend, I go, you know how many people ask me to do that? I go, you know, go, well, I'll do a couple free. I'm like, I'm like, all right, well, let's talk about it. And I went on and I searched him up and he had a very decent following and you know, 130,000 followers. And his videos were great from the heart. And I was like, okay, you know what? I, you know, I'll pay you. And he went through and he mined a lot of my content and videos. And lo and behold, the fourth or fifth one went, now it's at 25.7 million or something, 25.6 million. And that instantly sort of started pushing things to the top. And it's crazy how it happens overnight when you're still the same exact person as you were before. Yeah. And, and, and I want to talk about that because you and I have that same experience of saying, saying, okay, there's, there's life before virality and life afterwards, but the human is the same, right? The, but the external experience of who you are is, yes. I, I call it weird too. It's, it's very odd. Now I don't have 2.2 million followers. I have a million on TikTok, which is mm -hmm. odd in itself. And it is a weird experience and it's fascinating, but I think it's such a great study uh, of what it is. But I, I also, I want people to, to hear this, that it, the goal isn't virality, by the way, because that's not the goal. I know people that are viral and even on TikTok, I have all these followers, but I don't know them, right? I don't have any connection right. to them, you know, and, and it's, you're at the point where it's like, how do I connect with all these people? And so it changed, it's yes. a very different challenge, but what created the attention and, and the followers to me, and somebody told me this, it's like, and this is a, this was a, a firm that, that hires, they go, the reason we're looking at how many followers you have and your engagement is because people vote on your content every day. They're voting on you mm. and that's a vote. And yes. so it's, it, there is some value to that when people are voting, but it's also a great feedback loop to tell you what people are, are gravi gravitating towards and what they're buying into and what they're not buying into. But you'd said something that was really good. You said what you went and said, what makes a good video? So here you're, you're, you're starting off. And, and if you're hearing this, hear his process. He had the courage to do it. He had the courage to make mistakes, but then get feedback and what's working. He went just straight to Google, but then yeah. he found himself back <laughs> to who he was. Right. And saying, I'm just going to do what I already do and what I love talking about and do it from that perspective. And lo and behold, there is a formula to it. He did follow a process. He was looking at what worked. So he's doing his own research. It wasn't like somebody handed this to him, you know, as Jefferson make it sound easy, but he was putting effort into this. And so I think that th let's not lose sight of it, that it was like easy for you. It was still work. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the views are just icing. I do the same thing now as I did a year and a half ago. I am much more aware of just how many eyes there are. That's really the, the difference. And that's yeah. just within my own internal head. So if I make a video, yeah. I try to just think of one person rather than, well, the masses mm -hmm. like this, that's, that's kind right. of a weird thought and not really a healthy space. So I agree, you know, the, the formula for me is really that there's not much of one other than I know when I start a video, I like to tell people quickly what it's about, how not to be defensive, how to speak with confidence, how to do X, Y, and Z, like to the point to quickly let them know if you want to watch this, this is what it's about going to be about. Versus me starting a video and going, you know, I was talking the other day and I was talking to Jim and you know what Jim said and starting to go into this story. Stories are great and I can give those. It is the short, punchy, if you want Look. to know how to be more assertive, this is what it is. And mm -hmm. here's the one, two, three, very applicable. And I'm going to put it in my words. So I'm, I'm going to... I like using metaphors. I like using ways to say things differently. I mean, as an attorney, my job, I mean, what I, my job is to take big, complex problems and break them down to their purest form. So I, I turn chapters into paragraphs and paragraphs into sentences. That, that's just my, that's my function. And so when I'm giving these one, two, threes, part of that is finding ways to eliminate words the problem I see so many new creators when they start out is they'll go, here's a top three mistakes. Now, don't make this mistake. I see this all the time with my clients. You really want to make sure you avoid this mistake. Number one, and it's like you just wasted six seconds of telling yeah. people that this is a mistake. They're going to they're gonna pick that up. <laughs> yep. Like you just, you need to go right into it right away or you won't, you won't, you won't catch them. But I didn't 
figure that out until as time went on. I mean, I didn't start. <laughs> uh, there was a time where I was very happy, extremely happy with 2000 views. Yeah, I still am very happy with that. I'm very thankful. And so you, you kind of get in this mind space of acknowledging that to be on the applications is a privilege and I don't have to be on them and yeah. Instagram could delete my account. And that gets into other things of what do you do with that community? But it's, so let's, it's, let's, it's a very healthy presence to, to have that kind of thought in your head. I agree. So let's, let's take a different turn here because you said something that I, I totally agree with that thought of saying, wow, I have all these followers is you're entering a really unhealthy place. Yeah. And that that unhealthy place of being so concerned with the amounts of people versus the the, the responsibility of saying, okay, I've got this, because there's a burden and a responsibility that comes with attention, massive amounts of attention. Mm. But then you you have this amazing head on your shoulders. You are a very calm sort of soul. And I can Im only imagine in the fa face of hostility, you you keep that calm. You probably get even calmer. Yes. My mother used <laughs> to always tell me, the people that she likes to work with are people that can be loving and kind in the face of hostility. And right. it's always something that I've kind of always gravitated towards. So I want to ask you a totally different question. Who taught you that? Who are the people in your life that gave you that demeanor of being calm and having that strong head on your shoulders of knowing who you are and not allowing this, this popularity to sort of shift any sense of who Jefferson Fisher is? Where did that mm. come from? A lot of it's my father. So if you hear my voice, I'm a cookie cutter out of that. He has mm. and a cookie cutter from his grandfather. And our strain of the family is very diplomatic. So whether I have cousins that are, you know, they, they're, they're a bull in a China shop, man. My dad is very diplomatic. He would, I would see him address these problems very skillfully to where, you know, somebody's raising his voice. My dad is just calm and cool as, you know, collected as he can be and just as loving. And man, they just deteriorate. They just turn to putty in front of I him. I love it. The, and I get, I get a lot of that from him. I mean, you have to think he's an attorney. I, I'm fifth generation attorney, Renee. So there's, there's just a lot. And I'd get picked up from school and I'd go sit in a corner while my dad continues on with his deposition. So I just, I, I got to see that. I wow. went to trials. I, I mean, there's just kind of part of that that lingo, part of my my experience, my upbringing. The kindness of them is my mother. Mm. My mother is <clears throat> exceedingly kind, very intuitive. She's very good at reading emotions. So my dad early taught me the issue that you hear is rarely the issue. He would tell me that I get in arguments with my mom as a teenager. And he'd say, listen to me. That's not the issue. It's not that she grabbed at you about you know, leaving this out or doing this. It's a different, and it's it's this issue. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's repeatedly him giving me these little lessons uh, of how to handle not only my mother when I'm being an angsty teenager. I'm the oldest of four, and so I am the role model to to my siblings. I love being the big brother, and the kindness element was from my mom. My mom was very giving, very sweet. I'm just, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have two wonderful parents. I really I love that. When you think about like the, a lot of the work that we do is really uncovering people's origin story and helping them mm -hmm. understand where that comes from. And, you know, not everybody gets a chance to have two parents that bless them yeah. that way. I mean, it's, the, it's, it's unfortunate, yeah. unfortunate, the rarity, which is why I think it's so great. Like I was talking to somebody, I was like, I, I, I was saying, I'm so glad that Jefferson is getting this level of attention. Like it's, it makes me so happy yeah. because you're, you're bringing something that is so needed in such a chaotic world right mm -hmm. now where there's a, there's a subtle strength to how you do it. And they're showing that it doesn't have to be this over abundance of macho energy, but right. it's, it's as it's yet it's as masculine as can be, but yet carries, mm -hmm. sorry, the, the, the feminine kindness at the same time. Sure. So that, that the combination of both of those intersecting is such a powerful place to be where in today's world, we've lost sight of both, both of those, I think in yeah. where also, people are getting attention for the lack of depth because they've they've hit on all of the dopamine triggers 
that get the immediate like the, the simple sugar, the fast high of a post that doesn't carry much depth. Right. And yours is not that. It is what I believe where the world is moving towards. And, and you know, even if it's not moving, darn it, we need to move it towards that mm -hmm. and show mm -hmm. people that there is there is a depth to something. And so I I just I'm so happy to see it. And Thank and you. so when we go back to to this and you go, you know, I'm sure you as an attorney, you see all sorts of backgrounds and backdrops and, you know, you having to lead from that perspective saying somebody's, especially personal injury, they're probably scared to death. You know, am I going to get the money that I need? Am I going to be able to pay for this? You probably find people that are taking advantage of the system. In fact, let's just go, yeah. do you, you ever get to that question with somebody you know is just taking advantage of the system and what do you do? I don't take them as a client. <laughs> like you, Renee, I've. I've developed a very good skill of reading people pretty quickly. And I can tell by a phone call, I can tell by meeting them if they're not being true. And if they're not, I do not take them as a client. I don't care how much money it costs me. I don't care if their case is a good case. If it's not somebody that's going to align with me and my values and the values of my firm, not, not going to happen. So that's, I just kindly tell them I'm not going to be able to, to take their case because I, I mean, to be able to advocate to other people, you, you take on their problems. You, you take yeah. on, you, you're wearing their, their shoes to, to really be able to effectively advocate for them. And to do that, I, I want to be with somebody I care about and somebody I can rally behind and let the jury see that. But you're right. I'm I, the people who are scared to death. I have to train them every day in how to deal with conflict because I'm, I'm essentially just sending them off into the woods for, to the wolves for people who are going to cross-examine them. So I have right. to take from A to Z, equip them to be able to to perform well. You know, it's so good, man. I just think that we need guides in our life and at all aspects, you know, we need health guides to get us healthier. We need uh, yeah. guides, you know, parents, parenting guides, and then we need legal guides too. There's the, the legal world is a scary place, man. It's a scary yeah. place and to have good people that can do that. And you know, I think if you're listening to this, you know, ask yourself, what guide role do you need to play? Like, wh wh where is the leadership role for you in this? And how can you mm -hmm. find that place that that you can are so clear on what your values are that you can easily say no? I asked him, I go, what do you do? He goes, I don't take him as a client. There wasn't any thought process. There wasn't any dancing around it. It's just a sense of clarity of this is what we do. If it's in alignment, we do it. If it's not, we don't. And to develop that level of clarity, you got to know one's, oneself. And I, I just, I, I commend you for that, my friend. And I just want that to be even a further example for anybody listening that this is, mm. we can lead no matter where you are. And that clarity is, is so, so, so critical. And we talked about, you know, your formula is simple. You get right to the point and you got to tell people immediately, this is what I'm going to be talking about and getting punchy. I love that word punchy because it's your, and let's define that. And when you say to punchy, I, I know exactly what you mean, but I, mm -hmm. the, I want to put some meat behind the word punchy. Well, what I, what I try to do is give something immediately relatable that has some oomph behind it. So if I'm going to make the point one, two, three, then I'm going to try and condense a very big topic into something small. So if I'm going to say how to be more assertive, I don't know. I'm going to go right into it of, let's just say for it, for example, number one, don't speak with an upward in cadence. So I'm going to right there, tell them what they should do, or I'm going to relate it to what I do. So I'll switch. I'll, I'll make a video on, here's how I handle somebody who's not nice. Here's how, and, or I'll tell them, here's how to handle somebody who's uh, in a toxic work environment and, and navigate it that way. Now, it just works for me. I Like you know, most people like three. It's just easy, boom, boom, boom. And they know how many to expect every time. So that it's not like they wonder when the video is going to end. I, it's just, it's a, uh, it's short. So I try to keep it around 45 seconds to a minute, 45 seconds if I can, but that's, that's the punchy is really the time. That means if you can, I try to not to have more one segment more than 15, 20 seconds. If I can. It needs to be less than that, but I'll, I'll switch it up. So I might have the first little segment, the first point longer, or I'll have it shorter and the second point longer. I'll play around with it just, just to see how it, just to see how it goes. But it's, 
I just kind of roll with it, Renee. When I get in the in the car, I know I have about an hour to do it, and so I just try start playing around and start talking, and it kind of that, creates the content right there. That's a key point. You said I have about an hour to do it, and that's an hour a day that you devote. Yes, from start so, to finish. Love that. And so think about that. Think about this. I love that that it's not like I just go in there. Oh, I'll give myself ten minutes to get this done. You're putting an hour, and sometimes you probably get it done sooner than others. But you're right. devoting an hour to it. That's literally seven hours a week. Yes, to doing something, which is a pretty hefty commitment right. to just getting it done, right? And so a lot of people are, are there. They they devote a few minutes to this and expect to have something of quality. And so you're you're recording about how long does it take for you to record all the segments? Probably about 30 to 40 minutes the other remaining is the editing so the so it's and is, is that 30 40 minutes is that any of that research time no so so it's not all done in one take no 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 so i will like i'll, I'll grab my phone right now so i might grab my phone and say how to talk to renee rodriguez part one and then swipe it away and there's the first one and then that ends a little first video clip and then i'm able to <laughs> record another one number one have a good mic whatever so <laughs> then then you 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 combine them all and you're able to edit them in the app and post oftentimes i can get it done way earlier but i try to just reserve an hour because i still have about a 15 minute commute to make sure i can get home or maybe i got to go pick <laughs> up the kids or whatever i got to i got to be dad so that's kind of my time but i i do my best to in that moment think what does somebody out there need to hear maybe i got a comment from something maybe I, something happened in my day how can i help this person so you try to make it really relatable and i try to really make it authentic so if i mess up in something i'm going to leave it in i'm not going to make it super polished i don't think people care for the the super the super polished and this goes to like a bigger point that i've i've spoken about before when somebody likes to talk about social media too many people, and if the, the people who are listening to this, they try to treat their social media, especially those who are business owners, like it's a a lost and found ad on a street light. Like you just you put you put it out there hoping somebody's just randomly gonna see it. And not. You know, they they put out stuff like Happy Memorial Day, Merry Christmas, and that's really it. They're not connecting in any way. The way yeah. to engage with your followers is to be inside the coffee shop, sitting on the couch with them, talking about what they want to talk about. And the people who want to talk about what you want to talk about will find you. That's the crazy thing is that I could do this talking about something else and people will still find you. As long as it's something that you're passionate about, there are other people who share the same passion. You know, you know it's interesting. That's what I'm probably worst at is I spent so many of my years trying to polish and perfect and all that stuff. And and everybody's saying, Renee, you got you to do more just speak into into the into the uh the phone i'm starting a little bit better but still i love hearing that even for myself to just say get out of the polish and just just step into what's the most real without yeah. any expectation that's the it's the hardest part right. is just to get out there and say here's what i'm thinking and don't edit yeah people want that they they really do you you look at some of the the highest followed tiktokers that aren't like some separate celebrity they're not the most attractive. They're funny. They're not the best well-dressed. They connect with people. I mean, most of the time we're looking at social media when we're in the car, using yeah. the bathroom, or in free time. Like, this, yeah. you know, I mean, we, we want to connect with people to make, if that's how you create the connection, is people seeing the mistakes, seeing that, hey, this guy's in his car with his daughter's pink car seat in the back. Hey, I got the same one. That's how you resonate and and connect with people that way it's the, sure. the polish doesn't it's they they sniff it out if they don't think that you're being real i love that what would you say in terms of like like what's your what's your goal with this in terms of and let's think beyond the business because you're going to you're, you're going to grow a great practice you're going to be able to build yeah. something like this and what's driving you every day in terms of this because it's it's gonna i mean you're already getting the speaking engagements. You're going to get even bigger speaking engagements. By the way, if you listen to this, Jefferson, can I, if I can announce, he's going to be speaking at our, our AmpCon event in October, which I am so extre extremely excited about. Because excited. 
Yeah, me too. I'm going to be going on a campaign to make sure all of our followers and listeners know who you are. And so we'll make a, we'll make a tiny little dent in your following. Yeah, and it's going to be he's awesome. Also gonna be, excited. <laughs> he's also going to be coming to our master, our, our mastermind. And that I'm really excited. It's going to be a much more exclusive group where we get a chance to dive in and yeah, with a lot of our really highly focused clients that are, that are with us. But what's your objective with this? Like, and let's think beyond the business. Yeah. Like, why? So the answer is, I think of the people who message me every day, these, the most humbling, kind, heartfelt messages, Renee, of how I helped connect a grandmother to a grandchild she hasn't seen mm. in a year because of a fight they had, mm. or a marriage. I had somebody who contacted me and said, I followed one of your pieces of advice, where in your video, if you have an argument and somebody's trying to prove something, you just say, I could have done better. She said, I tried that. And without hesitation, my husband said, I could have done better too. She said, in my 12 years of marriage, he's never said that. And like, it's just these little bitty things that they uh, say, hey, you've totally changed my life or the way I communicate or help me with this. That's what, what drives me. I mean, just that internal let me help. Please let me help. I mean, that's why many attorneys go to law school and become attorneys so that you can have that, that level of service and have it at such a platform is just a huge blessing. And I, I feel like the luckiest guy alive to be able to help that. So I try to think of this one person that drives me. I don't monetize any of my content. That's not to say I mean, I'll get paid for a speaking engagement or if I, I know I'll build out a course or a book, all this other different stuff that that'll come. But I do very well with my law practice and I never want money to be the objective because as soon as you monetize, I'm human. I will then begin to judge what's good content and not good content based upon how much money it makes. And right. it's, that's not a healthy, that's not healthy. And I, yeah. I don't ever want to, to be that way. The hardest part for me is I've now encountered this place in my life where I'm dealing with anxiety. I'm having to focus more on my mental mental health because of the rise of the platform. Yep. And the amount of followers became very overwhelming when I finally just kind of had a second to soak it in. Yeah. And you have these different celebrities that you go, <clears throat> I don't know what's happening to my world, but I'm still the guy in the car in front of Waffle House, you know? Yep. And so it is just, um, that's a balance. So you say, what's what's next? Or what does this look like? I don't know, other than if you were to ask me last year this time, I'd have no clue. I would have had, yeah, yeah I would have said, you gotta be joking me. I like to have a spirit of just kind of naive curiosity. Like, let's just see where it goes. <laughs> you know, my son, one of my favorite things my son does, I have a son and a daughter, you're five and three. And they both haven't really still grasped the the concept of days in Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday. <clears throat> and so this beautiful little blonde headed boy will wake up, rub his eyes and go, so what are we doing today, dad? You know, I mean, just like every day, he has this fresh, like, I don't know, what, what are we doing? And what are we doing today? I, yeah. And I just get so encouraged by like, man, he just woke up and said, I'm just here. Like, yeah. you, you want to go outside? Cool. Uh, oh, I got, I got school today. Okay. Like, it's just he has no concept and those little moments like that yeah. are make a big impact on me i love love that you have this approach to it i love your mindset around it i love where your heart is around it i had somebody ask me at an event they came to me afterwards and they said renee thank you so much for showing up and coming here and i and i looked and i was like thank me i said do you know how silly i look up on that stage with no one in the audience Right. I said, this is a, this is a two-way street. I said, and uh, I appreciate you for being here. And I say that because most of my career was to pretty much empty audiences. Yeah. And now it's just really cool that people are listening. And so it's fun to see, you know, the, your self-awareness and the the reality of how overwhelming more attention can become. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the microcosm that I'm in and, and seeing that it, it brings us a sense of, of responsibility to, realize that people are watching and then, okay, well, who am I now? Okay. Yeah. Am I the right kind of person? Okay. Well, I'm still me. Okay. Well, is me good enough right now? Meaning oh, mm -hmm. not good enough. Meaning can I be better? Mm -hmm. And it, it has forced me to look at, you know, even a, a health journey, a weight loss journey on my end, 
to then challenging saying, you know what, I've gotten comfortable. I think if people are listening, well, what does the world need now? Well, the world needs more of this. Well, what do I believe around that? Okay, well, I need to then have the courage to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And the journey is is a fascinating one. And I just love seeing it in, in a good person's hands. And I think that's awesome. So I'm just I'm gonna keep telling you that, man. And Thanks, uh, man. I want to keep that keep that conversation going. So yeah. I know we're kind of getting towards the end here. So I wanted to talk about something I think is exciting. And this won't come out till after your big announcement, but yeah, you are writing a book. I am. Tell Very us about, excited that. about it. Yeah. So I just signed with uh, Penguin Random House and I'm just thrilled. It was a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. I'm totally new to it. And the only reason I got into searching for it was because the followers said, where's your book? Do you have a book? And I thought, well, I guess I ought to go have a book. And it's been fantastic. I, writing really what's been in my life the whole time. And that is my formula for how I communicate. And mm -hmm. I talk about how we align with each other. First, you have to align within yourself. Now, how do you prepare yourself before a discussion? How do you connect with the other person? And then how you deal with elements that are on the outside. And we go into the, the concept of fluidity being able to kind of go in and out of conversations, have still that self-awareness, have that detachment, yet have that sense of understanding throughout the, the entire experience. So it's the idea, and there's still a working title on it, but the idea is predicting the ability to predict your positive interactions with people mm. before you even get into it. And mm. I truly think it's it'll be one of the most powerful tools that somebody can truly possess. And that's the ability to communicate with each other. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. So I have about eight months until manuscript. It's going to be awesome. So I have, I have that, which, you know, they're expecting that's really all I have to do for the next eight months, I wish. And then it takes like nine months post manuscript for editing and cover and all that stuff. And then next year is a election year. They want to push after that. I don't know. I'm just kind of figuring this out, but I'm very, very, very excited about it. Yeah. Well, I, as somebody who just went through this last year, it's a fun and exciting and grueling process, <laughs> but yeah. worth every effort. And so one, if you're listening to this, stay tuned, you know, I'm going to be promoting this book. I'll be making sure that the moment I know about anything, anybody here listening will know about it. Thanks, you got a big man. fan over here, my friend, not just in, in your following, but just fan of who you are. And uh, it's just going to be a joy to watch you continue to grow, to watch you continue to make impact on the world. You're just, you're in a great place, man. And, and you got a lot of people who love you. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. means a lot to me. It, it really Absolutely. Really Anything you want to end with that you want to say to anybody listening here? I would just encourage anybody who's, who's listening that the first time you have the chance to show kindness, take it. It's a, it's a constant reminder that I, I give, to myself that includes even in my marriage even in friends that i've always been friends with if i had the chance to show kindness even when i'm not in the best spot best mind place kindness is the thing that that never fades it's a value that that never deteriorates so if you have the chance to share kindness to even the stranger to, to do it i love it simple and concise, like everything that you do. <laughs> well, it's it's been an honor to have you in here. Again, Jefferson's going to be at AmpCon. So get a chance to come meet him in Dallas, October 26th. And also part of our mastermind group. If you want to know about that, send us a message. But follow us on Instagram. And the best ways to get a hold of you? Yeah, you have Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook. And you just search Jefferson Fisher. You'll find me. You'll be all right. Yeah. Wonderful. And I'll make sure that all the links and everything are in the show notes. So everybody has that. And so thanks for, for listening. I know I'm going to bring, I'm going to try to get you back so we can get this right before book launch so we can uh, yeah, man. get it even more exciting and, and, and out there. And I know we have plenty more conversations to have. So again, it was an honor, my friend. We'll stay in touch. Honor's mine, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this time with us. If the experience resonated with you, follow us on Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or AmplifyMyLife.com. Share it with anyone else who's ready to amplify their lives. 
And remember to let our hearts speak in sequence. For more from Renee Rodriguez, visit meetrene.com.